Hello there and welcome to another Code Zonk video. You know, it has been quite a while since we've looked at Code Combat. We've looked at a handful of uh, lessons and tutorials that were specifically geared for uh, younger programmers and, and certainly things that were suitable for the Hour of Code. Well, Code Combat is no different. It is also one of the ones that's really great for the Hour of Code, but it's definitely targeting an older audience. Let's go ahead and get back into this and see if we can remember what this is all about. Previously, we had done a lot of work in Kithgard Dungeon, and that's this one here on the far left. But in doing all of that, we, we actually did open up the Backwoods Forest, and that's what we're going to be focusing on now. We're just going to take a, a handful of videos over the course of the next couple of weeks and see if we can explore what types of lessons exist in this second phase of Code Combat called Backwoods Forest. Let's go ahead and begin. Okay, and then just like before, it's going to show you a map of everything that exists here in this world. And it's going to give you an arrow to kind of recommend where it is that you need to start. So let's go ahead and accept their advice and begin. Okay, we're going to uh, make use of basic syntax, arguments, and strings. So this is, of course, uh, if you've followed my previous videos on Code Combat, this is going to be a review. Let's go ahead and play. We've got some things that we can equip. We've got some new shoes. I think I want to keep the shield that I've got. It's been a while since I've looked at this stuff. Let's take a look at the shield. It gives me a health of 15, but the old one that I had gives me a health of 38. So I'll keep that. And we'll just go ahead and play. Code Combat. All right, so our goals are we need to obviously survive and we have to get to the end of the path. Our bonus is we get two addition. We get a bonus rather if we grab two gems. So that'll be something to keep in mind. Let's go ahead and start the level. Just like before, we've got the uh, code window here. We've got some help down here. We've also got the playing field here as well. So let's go ahead and see what we need to do. We need to go to the end of the path and build a fence there. We're going to use our move XY function to get to where we need to go. So when we point to the target here in our game screen, we see that we have coordinates of X of 34 and Y of 45. Oh, and then look, if you look at the actual code here, they've already done that for us. So all that we really need to do then is make sure that we include the build command to make sure that we build the fence, the place that we need to actually build it. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so I've got a build XY command of fence, and I'm going to go ahead and press run. Fix your code. It says the build the fence at an XY coordinate. So the code that I've that I've actually punched in here is not correct, and that's obviously that's going to represent a problem. So I need to go back and fix that. And it's been a while since we've looked at this, so I'm not familiar with what the code is to actually build the fence. So let me close this. We'll run this back, and we'll take a look at some of our help over here. We know that we've got self build xy fence oh it's, it looks like it wants some coordinates here as well so if we look at this it says build xy you can put the fence in quotes but then you also have to include the coordinates so the fact that we've moved to those coordinates doesn't actually help us that's just where we need to move but we also have to tell it to build at those coordinates as well so we'll go ahead and correct our code we'll go back in here and we'll say include an X coordinate of 34 and a Y coordinate of 45 and see if that helps us. I'll hit run again. And it hasn't flagged an error, so that's kind of positive. Delab. All right, so I've built my fence. Let's do this now. Let's so let's go ahead and let's get our our bonus. Hold on. We actually have to get to the end of the path as well. Let's see. Do we need to know where the path is? Yeah, the path is at that X. So here's what we'll do. After we build our fence, actually we won't build our fence yet. What we'll do, we'll move to that spot, but then we'll also move to the spot where this gem is. Let me move this back. That gem is at 3659. So I'll say, let's also self move 3659. Let me correct my code. It's self move XY. That should move us up here. Then I'll move back down here. So 
let me do this. The first thing I'll do is I'll move to that gem. Then I'll move to the place where we need to build the fence and then I'll build the fence. Then I'll move to this gem here, which is at 3713. So we'll move X, Y, 37, 13. That should get us our last gem. Then we want to move to the very last portion here, which is 7125. I'm sorry, is that 7125? Yes, it's 70, 7125. Self, move X, Y, 7125. Let me try that. That's pretty elaborate, and I'm really just guessing here. So hopefully I'm on the right track. Let's try this. So my first move is to get up and grab that gem. Then I move back down here. I build my fence. I move down to that last gem before I make my way out. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh-oh, bad guy. I wasn't expecting the bad guy. So I failed. Let me go back. And let me just explore our area here again. All right, it's a bad guy up there guarding those gems. I'm not too sure what I need to do. Let me go ahead and grab some help. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Instead of moving to the last X, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a fence to block the ogre so that he doesn't get me. And then I'll just hang out and see if that actually keeps me alive. Because all I really need to do is I need to build the fence where they tell me to build the fence, which I've done, and then grab two gems as a bonus. I don't need to get all six. I can, but I don't need to. So I'm gonna run that and see if that makes a difference. My fence has been built. Let me grab this other gem. Let me build that fence there. Nothing's going on. I'm going to say done. So part of the thing with code combat is that you not only have to make sure that you're understanding some of the code concepts, but you also have to get through some of the puzzles and challenges here as well. And that's always been sort of what, what, what catches me up on this game. Let's go ahead and continue and see what faces us next. Alright, let's go ahead and go to this new area where we're going to be using if statements, which I believe is the first time we'll be using that here in Code Combat, but we'll also be using arithmetic, basic syntax arguments, and strings as well. Let's go ahead and play. I've got uh, something else that I can equip which suggests that there's going to be new uh, code expressions. It does. It says that we've got new skills that have been granted by going ahead and equipping this book. We've got the else, the if else, and it looks like we've also got loops as well. Let's go ahead and press play. Code combat. I need to lure the ogre to his doom, it says. There's a lot of code that's already written for us here. I'm not 100% sure what it does. What we can do, though, is we can go ahead and run it. We do have arrows here that suggest that we do need to look something over. Let's take a look at that and see what it says in the comments to see if it gives us a hint. So we'll look at this first yellow arrow here that's pointing at line 9. It says, Change the condition here to make your hero say, Come at me. It says, If 3 plus 3 is equal to 7, we need to make that true by making that arithmetic correct. It says, go ahead and come at me. If 2 equals 20, add one more taunt to lure the ogre. Be creative. So if 2 will say equals 2, these are pretty interesting conditions, then we'll go ahead and say, you're a wuss. So that's kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and press run and see what that does. You talking to me? Oh, he doesn't like that. What? He doesn't like that either. Hey, I'm coming down there to kill you. Uh-oh. 
Oh my. That's pretty violent. But we didn't have to do much because we were basically just taking action based on true uh, true evaluations. You know, 2 plus 2 does equal 4. 2 plus 5 does not equal, or 2 plus 2 does not equal 5. But we did have if 3 plus 3 equals 6, which it does, which that's a true statement. It's going to say something. So not too challenging, but I think that's just to sort of introduce the concept of if statements and how they are expressed in Python. So let's go ahead and say that we're done and continue. Okay, so obviously it sounds like we're going to be using conditional statements here. So it's likely that we'll see a little bit more of that here. Let's go ahead and click on the next level. Basic syntax arguments and strings. It says, can you beat Burl's Boolean quiz? So I think it's just going to give us an exercise on Booleans. And of course, Booleans are what you're actually evaluating in an if statement. So this may not be too intense. Let's take a look. Let's see, is there anything that we need to equip? It doesn't suggest that we do. We'll just go ahead and press play. Code combat. Galad. All right. We have to answer all questions correctly, it says. Let's go ahead and start the level. Okay, so we've got lots going on here in the code window. Lots of comments to read, and that suggests that we need to make sure that we uh, take a look at those and understand what it is that we're looking at. So let's start over here. We'll look at uh, line number seven where it says question two equals equals three. The double equal says, are you, are you evaluating each of these two sides of the equation as being equal? So it says to say the correct answer. And right here it says false. So does two equal three? The correct answer is of course false. So we don't need to do anything there. Now let's go ahead and look at the next one. The next one says question three equals three. Is that true? or is that false? Well, three does equal three, so we can comfortably say true. Now this one's kind of a trick question. Question on, on line 15 is three equals three. Answer true or false? Well, it says I don't know, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say false, and I'll explain why. Three is represented as a string here but over here, it's represented as a number. And strings don't equal numbers. To help you sort of understand that, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Strings can represent each other like this one does here on line 19. It says question three equals three. When two strings are identical, then you can comfortably say that yes, they are equal and therefore this is true. Strings that represent the same string can be identified as being equal. So question on line number 23 is one plus two equals three. So arithmetic can be true when it's being compared to its answer on the other side of the equation. So we'll go ahead and answer true. So the only thing that I'm not 100% not sure about is line number 19 where it says three equals three. Because in some languages, a a string is an actual object, and objects don't necessarily compare as equal to each other when they're both set independently of one another. But let's go ahead and see what it does in Python. Let's go ahead and press run and see how we do. Answer one was correct. Answer two is correct. Answer three is correct. Answer four is correct. Answer five is also correct. So did we do good? It looks like we did. So that's good. So what we're going to do then is we'll go ahead and press submit. Uh oh, what do we got here? Oh, it's the, it is the theatrical version of what just happened. It's pretty exciting at full screen. Last but not least. Oh, that's quite a fall. Okay, so we did it. So there's definitely more to explore here in Code Combat in this second world. What we're going to do is we're going to close the video there. Thank you very much for watching. Check us out next week. We've got more to explore here in Code Combat. Thank you very much, and I'll see all of you in the next video.